We teach suicidology in our program. We teach our students how to identify lethal patients to tell the difference between someone who's threatening and someone who is really lethal. And uh, in the Biodyne model, we divide the suicidal process into three stages. And by identifying the stage that an individual's in, we know how to treat them. Uh, we know whether we can treat them on an outpatient basis or whether they need a hospitalization or really what kind of um, intervention is going to be most effective for them. And uh, most people do not look at suicide in terms of those stages. They look at it as all the same. You know, someone says, I'm suicidal because they're having a rotten day and they're blowing off steam versus the person who is in imminent danger of committing suicide. That's all lumped together as one in most models and we're able to pull apart the stages and look at who's lethal and who who is not, which is immensely helpful in terms of saving lives. And also in terms of saving healthcare costs, we don't have to put everyone who mentions the S word in a hospital. My dad did some early pioneering work um, on suicide when he was with Kaiser Permanente and then with American Biodyne. And uh, I did my doctoral dissertation on um, suicidality. I performed a psychological autopsy for a suicide victim who had left no note, gave no warning, and the family needed to know why. And so I put the pieces together and figured out why. And um, that sparked an interest in the area of suicide. So I've taken my dad's model and I've evolved it several steps further, I believe. It was incredible. Um, I spent months interviewing people and putting pieces together and finally um, met with the family. And it wasn't a clinical setting. The family had me and my um, uh, doctoral committee chair um, to their home for dinner and we just talked, we conversed and I think by the end of the evening they had a very good understanding of what led up to that suicide. They were able to see a big enough picture that uh, it relieved a lot of the guilt of, gee, did I cause it? And the answer was no, no one person, no one event no one facet of that suicide victim caused a suicide, but it was a perfect storm of events and thoughts over many months. And through that